Okay, Peron, can I ask what kind of jellyfish is this? <laughs> it's actually a piece of plastic. Oh no! Under the sea, under the sea, darling, it's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. Hello, everyone. I'm Angela, and this is Pei Rong. She's a biodiversity manager at M Parks, and today we are going to find out who lives in the pineapple under the sea. Just kidding! We are here to participate in Intertidal Watch. So it's basically like a treasure hunt where volunteers from the community will go to the beach at low tide to find interesting sea creatures. I saw quite a few myself. So we are going down to the beach later to collect scientific data. So this is a citizen science program where we bring volunteers to the shore during low tide to collect biodiversity data. What is the main purpose of like in the tidal watching? To help us inform our management decision. So what the volunteers do is they collect uh, wildlife data from our shore and what we do is we use this information to inform our management and uh, decisions, conservation decisions in Singapore. Mm. So the, the information is very important because we support our decisions with science and data. So if, so in Singapore, our waters are quite murky, so not many people know about the marine life in Singapore, even mm. though it's really, really rich marine life. So healthy environments, um, like healthy waters, we see healthy biodiversity and wildlife. So by documenting them and monitoring them over a period of time, a long period of time, yeah. we can see that it's like an indication of the health of the environment. So what kind of things are we going to see today? We might see seagrass, seaweed, uh, some of very interesting animals like sea cucumbers, sea stars, sea urchin, perhaps even um, seahorses. So this is a ball sea cucumber. It's the, one of the species of sea cucumbers that we commonly find at Changi Beach. Okay. And sea cucumbers are actually very related to other animals such as the sea stars, the sea urchins. Right. And, uh, and sand dollars. Sand dollars? Yeah, sand dollars are like very flat animals that uh, look like coins. That's oh, why they call them the sand okay. dollars. Can touch ah. What will happen ah? Uh, if you touch it gently, it's actually okay. Yeah. So what if like I poke it hard or something? If, if it gets too stressed, right, what will happen is they will eviscerate. So what this means is they'll either release their guts, which is a really dreadful thing, or they will release some tubules that can be very, very sticky. So it's their defense mechanism to help deter their predators. Uh -huh. So it keeps them confused while they have time to escape. Oh my god! What does it feel like? Uh, uh, it's like... It's a boing boing at it. <laughs> oh! oh, oh. Yeah. They spat something out! Yeah, they so spat. the sea cucumbers, they feed on some organic matter or sometimes plankton. Do they have like eyes? Uh, so they don't have eyes. Oh. Yeah, they don't have eyes, but they just sense their way around and they move uh, on the substrate through their tube feet. So they have little tiny tube feet that they use to move around. This doesn't look like a sea cucumber. <laughs> yes, yeah, so sea cucumbers actually come in different shapes, colours and sizes. This one over here is the pink warty sea cucumber. So it has like tiny warts on its body. And right here where you see this part that's moving, this is actually the mouth of the sea cucumber and that's where their anus is. So this particular species, they actually feed on little plankton in the, in the water. So what they do is they actually extend their feeding tentacles and then they will slowly feed on the plankton that they gather. And put it tentacles, in. how many are there? Uh, I think about 10 for this one. Oh, it's so small though. Yeah, yeah. so it, it looks really beautiful when they, they extend it. Oh really? Usually animals that are brightly coloured kind of signal a form of either they are venomous or poisonous. Oh so shit! Honest, I wouldn't want to taste a sea cucumber like, like this because it's so brightly coloured. So we shouldn't touch it also, right? Uh, this one is actually okay to cut, touch. Ah uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it's... Oh, no, it's not safe to touch. Oh my god, Patrick! Oh my god, look at it! It's hugging itself. So this is a sand star, and right here you can see the tube feet eee! along the arms. This is this what it helps them to move. So this is an orange striped hermit crab. Uh, it is really very pretty. And I was just 
sharing with you about why is it important that we don't collect shells from the beach because right. hermit crabs cannot survive outside of their shells. Then how do they change shells? Ah, so when they're too big for a shell, they actually find another empty shell that's bigger and mm. then they will move to the next shell. Or like immediately like come out and then go inside? Yes, yes, oh. because they're extremely vulnerable when they're outside of the shell. Okay, so Pei Rong, where do the volunteers come from? Like, can anybody do this? So you don't need to be a scientist to do science and everyone can participate in an Intertidal Watch Citizen Science program. So the volunteers will be trained in a half a day workshop where they learn mm. about all the different marine animals and how to do the survey and then they'll be going out with us like today to oh. collect data. And this is also a good way to connect people with nature and provide an opportunity for people to be in touch with nature and to, to love, appreciate and conserve nature. Right, okay. I guess my day have come to an end but then like um, it's quite interesting to see many many like different types of sea creatures like the boing boing sea cucumber, ball sea cucumber and also uh, the warty which looks like the uh, crab stick and um, I, but I think like one thing that I feel sad about is actually our sea is quite dirty uh. I mean it might not be from us because like it, maybe like it's from some other places and then it just float all the way here so that's why we do our part as responsible uh, citizens where we make sure that we dispose our trash properly and we don't throw things into the sea. Right, you also don't throw your boots into the sea. Okay. Yeah.